This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, we got a walk-in cooler that uh, is not working. Uh, when I walked in the building, there's water all over the floor, so I kind of already had an idea that it was going to be iced up. So let's come back here. And oh yeah, it's a little iced up, huh? So uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and shut off power and we're going to defrost it. Now this unit has the Heatcraft uh, QRC uh, quick response controller uh, evaporator. So it's a smart evaporator, uh, electronic expansion valve, all that good stuff. Um, but uh, more than likely this particular customer, they're just leaving the doors open. I, I don't anticipate finding any problems, but again, we're still going to treat it like we don't know what's going on. We're going to get the ice melted first, then uh, we'll go up on the roof and check out the equipment. All right, the ice has a shiny, like really tough, hard look to it, right? It's not frost, it's really slick. To me, what that means is that this has been iced up for a while and the smart controller tries to put it into defrost, but it defrosts a little bit, then it just refreezes. Then it defrosts a little, then it just refreezes. So unfortunately, it's to the point that I can't get the motors out because I like to take the motors out, right? You look right here and it's just totally in there. So we're gonna have to do it with the motors in place. But these motors, they do have pretty decent water resistance. I'm not gonna say you wanna submerge them, but they do okay. So we will have to leave that in. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get it defrosted. Uh, always uh, disassemble as much as possible. Try not to get it on the floor even though there's already water down there try to make the least mess possible. I use my wand, the wand makes it really nice because you can put it on the shower feature. So we'll get this defrosted real quick. Oh, and when it comes to like getting behind the circuit board, if you don't have access, two screws and this thing kind of slides out of the way. Same thing over here, two screws. If you ever need to get back here to the transformer, two screws and this thing just carefully moves out of the way. You can get to the transformer behind that and do what you need to do. So you can see the shower feature makes it really nice just nice and slow and then I'm gonna have to stop right now because it's about to overflow so I'm putting more water than the drain can drain out so we just stop for a second let it drain if you notice that it's having issues draining then sometimes I don't think that's the case here but sometimes the ice can be all around the drain and it won't let it drain so just kind of clear right in the drain area which is usually right in the middle of the coil right there so if we attacked right here if it was frozen up there that would defrost it so I got it all defrosted from the front and then I just keep working it from the front. I typically don't use water on the back, but what I actually did is this whole thing's gonna fall right now, but we gotta be careful we don't break the sensor off. All right, so we get that out. And then look at that. The whole thing as a sheet is gonna fall as one piece if you just do it all from the front. So not too bad. Now I gotta get that out without breaking anything. Got the coil all assembled, but now I got to get all this ice. You can't leave this ice on these coils because it'll just keep building and building. So um, I'm using the mist setting on this guy. So it's very little water and it just kind of gets in there. And I'm watching, none of it's getting on the circuit board. Circuit board does have a protective coating on it too. But um, yeah, just nice and slow, melt the ice, it's not a race. We are back up and running. Um, I can see daylight through the condenser. It's a little dusty, but I'm not gonna clean it today. It's not that bad, I cleaned these recently. And our sight glass is clear. It's a very difficult sight glass to see, by the way. It's a good 105 degrees up here today, so it's pretty darn hot. That's the walk-in freezer, it's the walk-in cooler. So it's a little dusty, but it's not too bad. So side glass is clear, that's good. So we're gonna go downstairs and watch the box come down to temp. All right, it's uh, cooling down rapidly in here. I'm actually pretty cold because I was on the roof sweating. So now it's all freezing my back off. Um, that guy says 42, this one says 41, that's close enough. Let's go to program review, A through E. Refrigerant type should be 448A. Yep. Box temp, 35? Yeah. Superheat, six. Seven, okay, that's fine. It's not a slave. Uh, DFN, I think that's defrost per day. Let's see right here. DFN, defrost per day. Four defrost, let's go ahead and increase that because these guys are being really bad with their equipment. We'll go ahead and make it six, and then you hit enter. All right, keep going. DFF, I believe that's fail safe. 20, oh no, that's time, 20 minutes, okay. DFT, 
uh, termination temp. DFS, zero, yeah, yeah, all the rest of that stuff's fine. So let's go through again. I think I just put it into defrost inadvertently. Uh, refrigerant, box temp, superheat, slave, DFN. We'll make sure that says six. Yep, okay, we're good. Clear. And yeah, I probably put it into defrost by uh, changing that defrost time. I've noticed that that happens. So let's go ahead and hit reset and see if it resets the defrost. No, I can't remember how to reset this. There you go. That's how you did it. Just hit reset once it's actually in defrost. So this guy's working. Um, I'm going to uh, follow up next week. It's Saturday right now, so I'm gonna get out of here, put it back together, tell them to keep an eye on it, and I'll come back and follow up. Came back to follow up, got behind the coil. There is no ice, it's not iced up. It's been about three days since I was here last. Everything seems to be fine. I'm here for the ice machines today, so I just figured I'd check up on it and everything's good. I get asked often, how come I don't do anything? There's a couple questions I get asked often, but number one, how come I don't do anything about them leaving the doors open? Why don't I install door switches? Why don't I install door alarms? A good majority of my customers don't want that stuff, okay? Um, I've, I've done it all, I've tried it all, curtain strips. I've never tried to get them to install an air curtain, but they won't spend that kind of money. But curtain strips, uh, the cooks just rip them off. Um, you know, doors, they just tie them open, management, is so busy that they typically don't have time to go constantly regulate the door. So therefore we get freeze up situations. It tends to happen more in the summer than in the winter, obviously, because there's more of a heat load, more heat infiltration from in the summertime. And it tends to make the equipment just run and run and run until the box freezes up. Okay. I've even seen times where I walk into restaurants and you know, it's five o'clock in the afternoon and they've still got a delivery sitting you know, propping the door open. Like it, it's crazy. The stuff that you see, it's just a problem that you run into. And in all honesty, the customers, you know, I try to bring it to their attention. Hey, let us try to solve these problems. Let us, you know, do all this stuff. And majority of the time they don't want it. They just want us to defrost it and get it back up and running. With that said, when I defrost a coil, I'm thorough. Okay. Go through the entire thing. I typically do follow-ups for that exact reason because, and that's another question I get. How come I go back and do follow-ups all the time? Okay. Uh, because a good majority of the time I'm going out there on overtime to defrost this box. Okay. Number one, that, that cuts into my time and I don't want to be there any longer than I have to. So oftentimes if it's a customer that has repetitive issues of freezing up and stuff like that, I'll literally just go out there defrost the coil and then I come back. They don't really get a choice. We're going to come back, follow up, give it a couple days and, you know, make sure there's nothing else going on. Most of the time it's just because they left the door open, but sometimes there could be a mechanical problem, a sensor going bad or something like that. So I like to give it time and come back and do a follow up. In this situation, I wanted to do a follow up and we actually got another service call for their ice machine. So, you know, I didn't even have to charge them to uh, come back out. So it was simple. Okay. But again, I bring this up to my customer and it's what they want. Okay. I'm not forcing things upon them. Um, you know, to an extent, I try to treat them as fair as possible. I shouldn't say to an extent I do. I try to treat them as fair as possible because I'm not interested in making a quick buck. I'm not interested in just selling them parts. I want to continue to work for this customer for another 20 years. So I have to make money. I have to make a profit, but at the same time, they need to be operational and their equipment needs to run. So you got to find a happy medium, you know, uh, and it is what it is. Okay. So we had a frozen evaporator coil judging by the ice. I kind of described that in the video. It looked like a hard packed ice to me. That thing has been trying to defrost for a good while. Um, if it was just frost or something like that, that would indicate something else. But you can tell so much by the freeze up patterns of evaporator coils. It really does enlighten you and you start to notice patterns. Okay. So I went ahead and increased the evaporators defrost time to six times a day for a 20 minute cycle. And it has a 55 degree cutout. So it has a backup safety temperature, just like a walk in freezer, but it basically just looks at the time, you know, and, and then it'll stop the defrost. But other than that, everything else with the equipment was working fine. I didn't see a need to put service gauges on it, okay? Uh, and again, I came back three days later, they hadn't had any more problems and all was well. 
And if I didn't mention it, this video was filmed in June of 2022, so back in the summer. Uh, it is currently February 24th of 2023, and it's certainly not in the 90s right now, okay? It is cold outside, just going through archive footage. So I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much. Um, if you're interested in supporting the channel, check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have merchandise available. We have hats available. Um, actually, I think I'm out of stock on some of the hats. We've got a new shipment coming in, and I'll definitely let you guys know. Uh, but I think I have a few hats that I'll be able to put back into the system because when my inventory count goes, I always leave like five or 10, not in the inventory. And I'm looking over at my hat shelf right here and I, I might have some more hats. I'll have to go through and count. So I might be able to throw a few more large, extra large back in inventory. We have plenty of the small mediums. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a good sh uh, shipment of large, extra large hats coming soon. So, but anyways, hvacrvideos.com, hats, shirts, sweatshirts, beanies, all that good stuff available. Uh, other ways to help support the channel, if you're interested in doing so, the simplest way is just watch the videos from beginning to end. That's the easiest way, okay? Um, but uh, if you want to financially support it, PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel memberships, those are all great ways to help support the channel. There's links in the show notes of the video. If you're interested in purchasing any tools, truetechtools.com. Uh, if you like what they have, I have an offer code, big picture, one word. That'll get you an 8% discount on a good majority of the items on their website. There's a few things it doesn't apply to, but for the most part, you'll get an 8% discount and I get a small commission from that. So that's another great way to help support the channel. But again, watching the videos from beginning to end, that is the easiest way, okay? If you haven't already too, I don't know if I already said this, please, please, please consider subscribing to the channel, turn your notifications on and share the channel, please. If you have friends or anybody that you know would be interested or like the videos, please share those videos with them, help the channel to grow. I'd really appreciate that, okay? Thank you so very much and uh, we will catch you on the next one.